So it's been a while since I did a general update and I sort of crossed a big milestone. So I thought I would do a video about it and just kind of talk about some general parts of my build. So over the week, last week, I crossed the thousand hour mark of what I've recorded in my log for the build on my plane. Um, of that, I'm, I've logged 55 hours, um, mostly of my wife and a few other few odds and end hours of other friends and family that have assisted uh, over that thousand and I meant thousand and twenty nine hours as of today. So I kind of wanted to talk about where I'm at and uh, I'm a little behind where I thought I would be at a thousand hours, but in kind of reflecting on that, I, I wanted to talk about some of the changes that I've made to my build. Um, and talk about how that affects your progress. Um, so one of the biggest things that I did for this project, and I've done some videos about it, is I decided to either prime or Aladine slash Bondurite. It's a, they've changed the, the name of Aladine to Bondurite, same process, everything on my plane. So just about every single part if it was small enough to go into my Bondurite Aladine tanks, I did that. Uh, everything bigger got primed. On top of that, I primed it with some pretty good um, an ASCO uh, Noble um, chemical resistant two-part epoxy um, chromated paint. Um, again, I've got some videos on that. It's a uh, it's top shelf, definitely. The stuff does not come off, um, but it adds a lot of time to your build. Um, and, and I th estimate uh, with my logs that I've spent about 80 hours on either priming or doing the Aladine Bondurite. Uh, the Aladine process, you can sort of do it while you're doing other things. Um, I would set a timer, throw stuff in one tank, keep working on something else, go back, go from one tank to the other. So, you know, you could do a batch of parts where you're only really wasting five minutes, maybe 10 minutes total of uh, moving the parts from tank to tank through the process. If you're doing something else where you're at a workbench kind of working, but you figure that's two full weeks of full-time work uh, just on doing the priming and the bondurite. So it does add. Um, and, and there may be, you could say, I have a few more hours than that invested in it. Um, and you certainly have some prep time, uh, researching, ordering the parts, uh, learning how to use your paint gun. I had a lot of PPE, some pretty high end. I had a forced air ventilation system. Uh, again, those are some early videos. Uh, if you go back into my inventory of videos, um, so that's probably the biggest, uh, the biggest add to my project time-wise of all the things that I've done. So if you're, uh, if you're thinking about building, uh, just put that into perspective as to, you know, how much time are you willing to add to your project? And, and I'll throw some pictures in here um, uh, of what mine looks like. Um, I'm not gonna have any problems with corrosion on this aircraft ever. Um, and, you know, many say it's overkill. There's some protective after the fact measures you can do. Um, but it was something I wanted to learn. Part of this is just about teaching and learning and exploring new things. Uh, that's who I am. Um, I like learning new things. So um, I went ahead and did it. Um, and I'm, I'm glad I did. I, I, it's just something I don't have to worry about, something you can be proud of. Um, and then there's other things that where I've altered uh, my build from the sort of the stock sling prescribed and provided equipment. Uh, one of them was brakes. I did a video a couple videos back about the upgraded uh, to a larger Matco caliber. Um, and uh, it's a double puck. Um, and I, the terminology is escaping me, but it's a larger brake system all the way around. Um, that added a little bit of time, a little bit of um, alteration, but that was not a significant, um, probably a few extra hours um, to get that, you know, installed, 
couple things that I had to modify, but not a lot over what Sling was already gonna have me do. Um, there was obviously some planning, ordering, um, and then there's the cost. Uh, there's uh, definitely, it was, it's a, you know, I think it was $600 more to, uh, I returned my Sling provided brakes to Matco. They gave me a credit towards the thousand-ish dollar uh, upgraded parts, I think, is the basic. Uh, the other big thing I did, which is more of a cost than a time factor, was I upgraded the fuel lines. And I, again, I did a video on that a few back. Um, you have to run fuel lines no matter what. Um, and I, I don't think I've added much time to that, um, but it's, a, it's definitely a cost. Uh, all those fittings and the fuel line itself is very expensive. Um, I, I think I'm probably north of $800 for all that equipment, um, the fuel line, the fittings, some tools, uh, all that together. Uh, so that's definitely a cost add. Um, I'm very glad I did it. Um, some of that will come back if you if you have your plane long term, and at the five year, you know, recommended replacement of all the rubber fuel lines at five years, um, you you would probably make it up uh, then with time and materials uh, to rip out and replace all of that. And and most people would probably go back and if they're going to do it, they would upgrade at that point. So. Uh, might as well do it on the front end. You don't have to do that five-year replacement. And uh, and probably as a long-term cost, it's probably not, it's negligible as an upgrade. It just It's just some planning and research to get it figured out exactly what you need. Um, I also added the uh, fuel manifold from Midwest Sky Sports. Um, I think that actually is a time saver. Um, obviously, this is my first build. I haven't built another sling, so I, I can't really quantify that. Um, but I think that it saves you some material and some time. Uh, it certainly will make it easier for maintenance and long-term use uh, going forward. I added an oxygen system, and I've discussed it uh, many videos back, just as sort of part of a, a weekly update kind of video. Um, and I'll do a, an overview of that later, uh, but there's definitely some extra time involved with uh, mounting the wiring, the pulling the, uh, the pneumatic tubes from the oxygen tank up to the, uh, the various spots in the cabin. Um, I, have, I have ports in the, uh, the panel for the pilot and co-pilot. Uh, so there's some time involved there, not an extreme amount, um, but there's definitely expense. Um, uh, that system is expensive. Um, they, Aethra is who I have mine, or Aethra, uh, is who I bought my system through. And they've just come out with a, uh, an oxygen concentrator, I think is the right terminology. Uh, the concentrator that they've just debuted, and if, if I was to do this another build in the future, I would buy one of those probably instead of having a tank. Uh, but I think he's selling those for $5,700. The, uh, the tank system I have was less than that, uh, but not dramatically. Um, I have a four-place oxygen system, and uh, it was expensive, so I think it was in the mid-fours to add to this project. Uh, plus some additional expense, I think, to uh, Midwest Panel Builders to uh, add that into my harness and, and all that. Um, I moved the static system to the tail. Um, the, the parts were negligible, $25, I think, to Vans Aircraft for the, uh, the static ports. You probably can't see it in this shot. Um, that was a, a move that I'd seen online that people recommended, so I went ahead and did that. Uh, it's a change, but not a, not a huge time. If you, if you do it on the front end when you still have access before you put the top skins uh, on the tail, um, you're, it's, it's an easy upgrade. Um, I did a video on this, the upgraded firewall insulation. Um, that was definitely some cost. Um, the, that insulation that I use, it's stainless steel with a, 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 a high temperature rated insulation um, sandwiched together. Um, if you want some more information, go, go three or so, four videos back and I, I have that. Um, I think it looks really nice. I think if I ever have a fire, it's gonna definitely be super productive. 
Um, as far as the sound deadening qualities, I can't say. It's probably as good or better than what the factory provides. And durability, I think, will definitely be an upgrade. Um, but the, the panels are, uh, they were over $100 a piece and I used three of them. So again, that's, uh, you're, you're, you're getting close on an aviation unit there. Um, well, not really, not $1,000. It was $400-ish, I think, for the three pieces. So the next thing I wrote down here was uh, upgraded insulation in the fuselage. Um, Sling has some laid out insulation uh, where they want you to put things. I added a lot more insulation and I purchased that. Uh, what Sling provides you is just the basics and I think it's pretty basic insulation too. Uh, I added a good bit more. Um, there's a lot of discussion you could make about insulations for inside of fuselage. Um, I wasn't quite as worried about fire resistant um, in the tail cone and in the back seat, uh, just because it's so far away from the engine compartment. Um, but I did, I did buy some and burn it with my torch just to see how it reacted and uh, got myself a comfort level. Uh, also, I didn't mind putting a lot of insulation on my side panels and around because I had used a two-part epoxy primer um, on all those pieces, so I wasn't worried about it trapping moisture and causing corrosion uh, because I have a, a pretty top shelf uh, epoxy primer on all of my panels. Um, people who have bare aluminum, uh, when you start making changes to that, um, the different types of foam sometimes can trap moisture. So that's a consideration to banter about when you're making decisions on that. Um, a big time um, thing was not logged in hours, but logged in my time in my head thinking it through was the change to the heater and the ventilation system. Uh, most of you have probably seen uh, uh, Evan uh, Brunier, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name properly, had redesigned the heating and ventilation system. And I think, at least in principle, what he's reporting and then just thinking it through, I really liked what he came up with. I'm not doing quite such a, uh, an exotic version. He, he did a 3D printed, um, you know, switch controlled on off switch for the fresh air. I didn't do that. Uh, but I did reroute all of how the air is going to come in and get sorted through. Um, we'll, we won't know for a while how that worked out, but uh, I think it was worthwhile. Um, obviously, we've heard reports that the sling stock system is not wonderful on the heat side. So I, I think this will be an improvement, uh, but we got to flush that out once I start flying it. Um, the other thing is I, part of the fuel system is I upgraded the booster pump sort of configuration. Uh, someone else had posted online some little T fittings that go into the existing booster pump. Uh, and then I was able to uh, tie that in with the uh, fuel lines that I was using. And uh, uh, that was probably not uh, uh, wasted any time at all. Uh, probably was a $50 um, cost to, uh, to get those two fittings and then I already had the fuel hose and all as part of my project. So um, that was a little bit of a change. Um, again, a little time thinking it out, making sure you had the right parts, doing some research. Um, and uh, it, it is a little bit of a change from uh, what Sling provides. So uh, as you can kind of see, I'll, I'll post some other pictures as I'm talking uh, just of what I've, I've done. Um, my 1,029 hours, uh, I have, you can't see it, I'm looking at, I have my seats completely built, the center console is built, um, the wings, the flaps, the ailerons, everything is ready to get installed. Um, so I'm currently sorting out the wiring for the avionics, uh, and I'm ready to mount the engine probably in the next week or so. Um, a neighbor uh, had a lift, um, an engine hoist uh, that I borrowed yesterday, um, and I'm going to start sorting out, getting ready for that. Um, I live in a flying community, so I had lots of volunteers to come help me with that project. Uh, I don't think it's going to be all that difficult um, from watching other people's videos. 
Um, but that'll be the next big step, uh, get the engine uh, bolted on and, uh, and then start configuring the, the cowling and all that. So uh, I, I feel pretty good um, where I'm at, uh, especially with the upgrades that I've done to my, to my plane. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think it's gonna start coming together. Um, the, the windows, uh, the wings, uh, I still have to put the wing tips on. I still have my wings in the, uh, um, in the stands that come from Sling, um, just because it was easier for me instead of building a rack. Um, again, some of you who have watched my videos will know that I moved uh, during this build. So I moved from one flying community to another. I, uh, I retired and, uh, and then I took a different job. So then I moved up uh, to North Carolina from South Carolina. And uh, that didn't kill too many build hours um, because I wasn't logging the time that I was packing up and unpacking all my parts. Um, but it did slow down some of my momentum. Um, a couple of tips. Uh, anyone who's researched building a plane um, has heard these, uh, but I'll, I'll sort of reiterate them again. Uh, keep at it. Um, you know, even if you just go out and, and plan what your next build day is going to be, um, write it down, say, I'm going to do the X, Y, and Z tomorrow. Um, tinker for 30 minutes, keep it going. Um, I had a couple of breaks where uh, when I moved, where I was just busy with other things and it was just easy to do other stuff and not get back re-engaged um, because there's just, there's always something else you can be doing, especially when you're setting up a new house. Um, but uh, if you keep going every day, uh, even if you just go out, you know, if, if you're building in your garage, um, go out and do it, you know, every night, go out for a half an hour, an hour, those hours do add up um, and you can keep moving forward. I, I think that was something I've done pretty good um, with a, a couple times I've taken breaks, we had family, um, stuff, you know, Christmas and the holidays and you get out of, you get out of whack. And then sometimes it takes you a day to get back into where you were and what you need to be working on and that sort of thing. So anyway, uh, sort of rambled here, but, uh, I'm real happy with my progress. I, I am shooting for summer to finish this plane up. Uh, I, I'm, I've, I've thrown out June as a date. I have no idea if that's even somewhat realistic, but I, I wanted a date to push myself. Um, I, uh, I, I think that'll help me push. And then as I get further, we'll see uh, where I'm actually gonna land. But uh, I'm gonna try to get it done by the summer and uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, we can uh, uh, do some updates as we go forward and see where I'm at. But uh, to everyone building, good luck with your build and keep going. Um, feel free to shoot me an email or post comments about anything you have questions about. And uh, I, uh, I, I've, I did a little video on um, cutting out the template for this. So after this, I'll do a little video of um, cutting out the avionics panel using this, uh, this template that I got from Midwest Panel Builders. Um, I did a little video while I was working on it. I'll throw that in the back um, so you can watch that if, uh, if you're gonna buy a panel from Midwest Panel Builders. Uh, this template saves a lot of time because it exactly matches your panel and you can use it whoops, to cut out. So uh, anyway, um, thanks again and uh, until next time.